Bravo. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Hello, dragons. It is an absolute pleasure to meet you. What you've just heard is the world's first analogue optical guitar cable, and it's called a light lead. My name's Danielle Barnett. I'm David Holmes. And we're here today to ask for £70,000 investment in our company for 20% equity share. I've worked with Danielle for over 20 years. We've managed two top 10 acts and we've toured all over the world. Uh, my cousin was a guitarist in one of these bands and he would always use a copper cable to play his guitar. Said he preferred the sound over wireless or digital systems. But one day he stepped forward to play his guitar and out of his amplifier came a radio signal. So I looked into the copper cable and found it's made of hundreds of tiny hair-like copper strands. These strands break over time and cause interference in the cable, till eventually the whole thing acts as a giant radio tuner. The obvious solution to me was to not use copper wire, but to use an optical fibre. But all optical fibre systems these days are digital, so I developed my own analogue optical guitar cable. We've had rave reviews from everybody that's used our light lead, including Mike Chapman, and Rick Simpson, who is Coldplay's producer, and he has just finished recording Coldplay's Grammy award-winning album, Head Full of Dreams, where he used the light lead on their guitars. Do any of the dragons play guitar? Um, would you like to try? Okay, you come on. Go I don't play guitar guy. at all, but I guess, I guess I'm going to be the... <laughs> go on, okay. here we go. It doesn't matter. Just anything. Strum anything. Strum it. Yeah. I wish I had learned. Right, Amazing. let's put this over your, over your <laughs> shoulder. Switch the amp on. Go on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Born rock star. <laughs> right. Right. Simply the best. Better than all the rest. Yes. Mike Chapman. Mike Chapman. Of Chapman. Chapman. Of course. Uh, Mike is a personal friend of mine. Wow. I saw him last week, actually. Um, so tell me about your background, David. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I've, as I said, I've worked with Daniel for 20 years. 20 years. I've always been um, an audio engineer. My background is also music. Um, I'm the lead singer. <laughs> I have been for 16 years for um, a song that was number one in 1993 called uh, The Key, The Secret, Urban Cookie Collective. So, How like, does it go? I got the key. I got the secret. Wow. Sure. Do you remember that? OK. Well, so no, to be fair, I've been doing it 16 years, and the original singer was called Diane Charmaine. Mm. And when she left, I took over, and That's awesome. I've had the blast, you know. But I, I've seen, you know, uh, microphone cables, and there's a faulty cable. And, and if we can implement our technology into devices, you won't get that problem with faulty cables anymore. It would literally be plug in. They don't break. What you're saying is your product lasts not just long, it just lasts a lifetime, over above a copper product. Yes. Copper yeah. products do go wrong. So if you think about that from a business perspective, yeah. what does that tell you about your product? Because if your product is so good that you buy it once, yeah. you're not going to get any repeat business. Have you thought about that? I've Absolutely, worked, yeah. I've worked on stages um, most of my life, and the amount of times I put an amp down on a copper cable and severed it, I mean, accidents happen. Cables break. So you can still break this cable. You can still cut it, it in you half. You can cut it in half. Yeah. I know nothing about this, but if you do sell it, I'm worried that you've got no repeat business. The entrepreneurs are certainly displaying some stage presence, but Peter Jones has uncovered a potential flaw in one of their product's biggest selling points. And Deborah Meadham wants to know whether their invention has struck a chord with industry insiders. The big guys, are they aware of you? You know, the they current are. operators? They are aware of us. We went to one of the high-end cable companies and I said, would you like to test it against your high-end cables? And so they plugged in their top of the range. I think it was like a 10-foot cable. And then they plugged in the light lead and there was no difference. And ours was a 30-foot cable. And he said to me, he goes, I don't know why anyone hasn't done this before. And I said, nor do I. So, so, but what, so, but what happened next? You know, what I'd have then expected is them to say, look, we need to talk. Basically, we've had two working prototypes. Like, Fender wanted to take it away for two months. If it gets lost, if it gets broken, we're down to one. We, yeah. we haven't had the money. We've just had the passion and the belief. 
I mean, what I'm trying to work out is, is if this is a great idea or a great business. Right. And, and there's a massive difference between the two. It strikes me that the single most useful bit of marketing that you could do is to get this cable into the hands of the top guitarists mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. What, what would it cost you to produce 200 of these cables? Our minimum cable order is 10 kilometres, which would cost 15,000. That is That's the cheapest okay. way of buying the cable, otherwise the cable becomes expensive very, to very buy expensive. in short runs. It doesn't matter if prototypes are more expensive. What matters is having 200 of these things to get into the hands of guitarists. Absolutely. Um, and you could do that. You don't need to buy 10 kilometres to do that. What matters is that you get them in the hands of people whose judgment is unquestioned. Oh, absolutely. We've used our prototypes to get it into the hands of, you know, Coldplay have used our prototype on their new album. But you've only got two. We've got just two. I know, yeah, it's ironic. Then, make, then, <laughs> then, for God's sake, make a hundred of them mm. and get more prototypes in the hands of more people. Everything else will follow from that. Now, it also strikes me that you're probably in a better position to do that yeah. um, than I am. Um, because I, I don't have a whole load of the world's top guitarists on speed dial. So, I, I'm, I'm out. One dragon down as Nick Jenkins offers advice but pulls the plug on a deal. Now, Sarah Willingham wants more information about that big celebrity endorsement. You're sort of hanging your hat on the Coldplay thing, which I think is great. They've obviously used it and thought it was really, really good. But what happened after that? So they're using your prototype, which they've then given back to you, no, I assume. No, they've still got it. They've still got it. So you've only got one prototype we've got, now. No, no, we've had three. Now we've got two. But, you know, we've got Mike Chapman, and Mike Chapman has basically said there's not, not a guitar player out there that won't want one of these. Yeah, but the, the point is, yes, you might have got people to use them, and yes, they've said that's great, but if it was really great, they're like, you're not having this back. Mm. You're going to have to go out and make another one. Or I'm putting in an order for 100 of these because we're just about to do a round-the-world tour yeah. and I need these cables in my life. Now, that hasn't happened, has it? So I'm afraid I'm out. This isn't my area of expertise. No. Um, the closest I ever came to was my years of bingo calling. Oh. You know, <laughs> but oddly enough, our biggest issue was blinking microphone leads that were Thank constantly, you. Yeah. Cr you know, you, you, you'd be in the middle of your busiest time and suddenly your micro leads crackling, mi yeah. microphone leads crackling up. So I actually, oddly, I know it, you know, completely Thank separate, you. but I get the problem. But you've got a lot of people out there with a lot of money who love your product. There could not be a stronger statement to say that we've got this amazing thing. How about you invest in our business? Absolutely. That would be my first port of call. Yeah. I would have sent it out there and I'd have said, how about we change the industry together? Because they've got a lot of money. It sounds to me like you've got something, but I'm not the best person to judge whether or not that, you know, but I won't be investing. Right, okay. I'm out. Only Tuka Suleiman remains. Is he prepared to take a punt and throw the passionate entrepreneurs the cash lifeline they so desperately need? Am I the last one? You're the, You're last, the last dragon. One. The last Tuka. dragon. Oh, you've got so much energy, so much enthusiasm. <sighs> Oh, let me ask you a question. Could you afford to make 100 of these yourselves? No. You can't? No. And, and the thing is, as well, it's manufacturing it. It's like well, a whole new world for I me. Know. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, this is my offer. Bless your heart, Tuka. I will give you the 70,000. Thirty-five percent of the business. Do you know what? We will do that. We'll do it. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very well much. Done. Well done. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. A deal, but with a hefty price tag, fifteen percent more than the entrepreneurs were looking to give away. But in return, they get the key and the secret to success in the form of a wealthy business partner. So blessed. <laughs> She's great. Wow. Is that good? 
That was a bit crazy, wasn't it? That was a, that was a real coaster. It was a real emotion. Coaster. Bless his heart. Yeah, and bless Tuca. for giving us such a chance. Yeah, bless his heart. Bless Tuca for giving us a chance, because that's what we need, is a chance. Yeah.